Set against expansive plains and eucalyptus-dotted hills, Jebel Ehud rises from the dusty landscape. It's here, near a small Moroccan town, that a remarkable discovery was made. One that rewrites history and changes the very notion of who we are and where we came from. The day we found the human fossils was extraordinary and super exciting. We could tell from the start that we had something exceptional. The results we obtained constituted a revolution. Today, there is only one kind of humans on Earth. And so we are touching the very origin of this one humankind that lives today. This is a story about us. This is Inside Africa. Our story begins in Morocco. In the capital of Rabat, Abdel Wahed Binsa, a professor of paleoanthropology, prepares to embark on a journey six hours out of the city. Using fossils, his field of work examines the origins and predecessors of the present human species. Hailing from the National Institute of Archaeology and Heritage, he's returning to Jebel Ihud, a place he first visited in 1993. From the first moment I saw it, I became attached to the site. An attachment which has culminated, thanks be to God, in the results that we have succeeded in obtaining. Situated around 400 kilometers from Rabat and rich in the mineral barite, the area is home to large mining operations. It was in 1961 when a site was being cleared that miners unearthed an unexpected object. Fossils were accidentally discovered at the site. In the course of mining through this hillside, they discovered a skull that eventually came to the attention of researchers. The hill of Jebel Ehud soon became a hotbed for archaeologists who conducted a number of digs, including ones in 1967 and 1969. Scientists at the time assumed the hominin fossils were that of Neanderthals, but limited by the dating systems that existed at the time, the estimation of how old these fossils actually were fluctuated, which made interpreting them even more difficult. Despite uncovering more remains and ancient stone tools, other archaeological discoveries in Ethiopia, Kenya and Tanzania soon overshadowed the fossils from the Moroccan hill. Largely abandoned, it wasn't until the 1980s that a curious postdoctorate student who had been given the opportunity to study the fossils firsthand started paying attention to the site once more. Back in the 80s, nobody had a clue of the age and, and the significance of some of these fossils that had been found during uh, mining operations in the, in the area. And already then, I realized that they had a very strange mix of features and they could represent uh, something very archaic along the line of the origin of modern humans. To uh, obtain a good uh, radiometric age, uh, it implied to reopen an excavation. He was convinced the bones were in fact those of Homo sapiens the species from which we evolved. In 2004, more than 40 years after the first fossil was accidentally found, Beninsa and Ublin were granted permission to excavate the site once more. Together they led a joint project between the National Institute of Archaeology and Heritage in Morocco and the Max Planck Institute in Germany. Paleontologists, they live with hope, of course, and uh, I would say officially the, the <clears throat> reason why we reopened an excavation was to establish an accurate age for the already known fossils. But of course we had this, uh, this um, secret uh, hope 
that we would find more. And we have not been disappointed because almost from the first year, we started finding bits and chips from human bones. À peu près chaque année, on va dire. C'est un mois de... Roughly every year, we used to work on archaeological dig in the ground for a month. And then in 2007, the year that I call our best year, we found the main fossils. On a sunny April day, the international research team uncovered three fossils that would send a ripple through the world of archaeology. We had the top of a cranium, and then soon after that we found a mandible and a, and a long bone, a femur. And it was quite clear, even before the bones were out of the earth, that this was going to be an exceptional find. Can you imagine our huge surprise when we discovered these three fossils all together on such a small surface area? It was almost a feeling of ecstasy for the whole group. You know, after many years working on uh, hominids and archaeological sites, I surprised myself uh, being, you know, stuck in this site uh, at six uh, or seven o'clock, cleaning a piece of mandible with my, my colleagues uh, wanting to pull me out of the place. Eager to work out just how old they were, the team was able to use the latest dating technology to test them. The big wow <laughs> was when we got the first results of the dating by luminescence techniques. I expected the site to be older than what we thought, but not that old. <laughs> 